Thank you, ladies. Talk about traveling the highway home. <clears throat> we travel the highway home back from Belize. Uh, highway to Ember did a thing that they'd never done before. Uh, they came by themselves. Got on a plane by themselves. Took off by themselves. Landed in Miami, went through all that stuff, waited probably five hours, got back on the plane, flew into the cold, cold northern tundra at night. Had to choose between two cars. We had cars all over the parking lot, BWI. <laughs> and then they had to see if one car would start, and if it didn't start, there was a contingency plan with a battery or some such thing. And it started. And they made it safely and gave us, sent us Texas all the way that everything was okay. So we're very proud of them this morning. I think well, I want to give my hand. That's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. We were a little bit concerned because they'd never done it before, but we finally quit worrying when it dawned on us that Amber is in charge, not how. <laughs> <laughs> so at that juncture, we ceased to worry. We knew everything would be all right. <laughs> but they did good. We were proud of them. That was really a big deal to me. The uh, first time they did it, they just handled it like a pro. So now, probably, when we get ready to go the next trip, they'll come up to us and say, well, we don't need for you guys to go. We'll just go by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> that indeed will be a disaster. <laughs> but um, we, we didn't really get kind of two trips. We had a, a trip with Amber Logan with us, and then we did a particular set of things and a particular set of occurrences. And then after they left, it was Loretta and Henrietta and me, and then we. We had a whole different week with a different dynamic, and we did specific things that we did by ourselves and with Jeff and, and there's Letty and, and the others. Uh, on the first week, when Amber and Howie were there, we went south on Sunday, 100 miles, and we worshiped with Bob Farley and his church. And, and really had a, a really great time. Got to talk to him about a lot of stuff. I'm not gonna say too much because they gotta say something. But then after they left, uh, we went the second Sunday, Henrietta and Loretta and myself, up north to, or west, wherever they are, to Ken Barber's church and had a service for them in a totally different setting, different city, different family, different church members, and we had a wonderful time there as well. And so it was uh, it was a unique, unique trip. But in the whole trip, I I think I really enjoyed just being with our team and our old family uh, very much. We didn't have we didn't have Brown to be in the bedroom screaming, bring me a cup of coffee and interrupt us. Uh, we just enjoyed each other. We got to enjoy Letty and, and Jeff. Uh, we got two guys building a zip line for us and we got to spend time and enjoy with them. So, so it was a good time. So with all that said, I'm gonna ask them to come up and share with you a testimony of what they received from the trip. And um, it's customary to bring up the most important person first. So I want to. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see what I'm seeing. You can't see what I'm seeing from up here. <laughs> That proves my point. 
Because when I say the most important person is going to come up first, believe me, Amber did not look at Howie. She turned all the way around and looked at the most important person picked in the back, Henrietta Law. So I'm going to ask Miss Henrietta Law if she would come forth at this time. That did not hurt you finished it. No. Uh -oh. I agree. I, I have to succumb to that as well. I'm waiting for her to say she don't know hers. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to live that down. i got to tell you that story. Oh. And I, I, I can never stand to talk to people like this. I hate this. But I have to do it. Because when I was three years old, I went to Sunday school on a bus or walked or however I got there, I don't remember. Probably horse and buggy. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> we had a Christmas play. And so I had to learn this little piece to say. So when I walked up on that stage and I looked out there, I said, I don't know mine. <laughs> I walked off as fast as I could. And they make fun of me ever since. <laughs> That's been 70 years of <laughs> For one little thing we did. But anyway, Lise was a, a really wonderful trip, and the end of it, I'll tell you first, was wonderful for me because we come into Miami, and that's where my sister and her husband live. So I had called them on the phone, so they came to the airport and ate dinner with us, and that was really nice because I hadn't saw her for about three years. So that was wonderful. But the beginning of the trip, uh, first Sunday that we were there, um, we went down to Bob Farley's church in Punta Gorda, and it's 125 miles, he told me. I was just setting everything straight here. Because <laughs> I was driving. <laughs> so the pastor preached, and uh, it was a very good sermon, and we met and, and talked with the Farleys. They've been there for 20 years, they're missionaries, and they have built a big training center, real nice. And that's what he's been doing for the 20 years he's been there. And they got a church in the training center. And he's got probably about 50 or 60 people in his church. And so now he's starting a Bible college. So he has rooms in this big building for to teach people. And so that's coming along real good. He wanted to start the 1st of January, but he's not quite ready. He said he's got a few more things he's got to do. And But the good thing is that... He had asked us if we wanted to be on his board for his college. So we said yes. And uh, so he said what he wants to do, he wants to join up with us for our place, and he's going to bring people there and do Bible study at our place. So our place will be a Bible study uh, facility too. So that was good news. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, because when you're doing these things, you want to be doing God's work, you know, and so you need to see it and get, to give you encouragement that what you're doing is correct. And uh, so anyway, that was wonderful. And um, and the, the building, the big building that we're building right now, we call it a castle, just because it's a two-story building and we put little this thing across the cement across the top. It makes it look like a castle. It's not really a castle, but it's it's a castle. It's a <laughs> castle. Why it's a castle. castle. <laughs> Well, the guy that takes care of our place named Jeff, he's, uh, he stays there 24 hours a day and watches everything. He's like a, what would you call it? A caretaker. Or caretaker, or whatever. <laughs> he does everything. But he calls it a palace. To him it's a palace. So <laughs> we have our names for it. But uh, anyway, we was, I'm hoping and praying that it will be finished by this time next year. But, I mean, it's getting close, but when you start doing the last things, they get slower because he's building, like, countertops and bathrooms with tile. And, I mean, that all takes, the whole thing is all framed and everything, but and, uh, about probably 75% been painted. And, you know, just those things, but they're the things that are slow because he's making cabinet doors and he's sanding them. It's one man doing it. So, you know, it takes him time. So I'm hoping by next January it should be done. And of course you all know that Jeff, our caretaker, well, some of you don't know, uh, they got married last June when we were down there for their wedding. That's my caretaker and he married a lady. 
And so when we got there this time, they had a baby, six weeks old. They didn't even tell us. We didn't know that she had a baby. So we had a surprise with a sweet little baby. So, <laughs> so that was good. And of course we went to Ken Barber's church the next Sunday, and he's up in the northern part, and he has a prison ministry, which he does very good, and um, I feel that it's um, God's calling for him because he's, he's the type of person that could go into a prison and preach about God and teach. And uh, because nobody knows somebody in the prison could be one of God's waiting to hear the gospel. Amen. And um, so I feel that his work is very important too. And he lives in a very rough town. We live in a real nice village where our place is. And I mean, it's uh, the people are poor, but they're, they're good and they're sweet. And I mean, there's a couple of bad ones like there is everywhere. We've got a couple of bad ones in Maryville too. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> people always say, oh, well, I know you're going to go to police that people. As a matter of fact, Howie's dad said that, that somebody got killed in Belize yesterday or this morning. <laughs> yesterday. And I said, I wonder how many got killed in New York City. You know, I mean, they think one person getting killed in Belize damns that, that country. But I don't see that because I see awful lot of stuff happening here. Of course, we're a lot bigger, of course, so we're going to have more. But no matter where you go and what you do, there's always going to be unsafe people and criminals. So, you know, we have to face that fact. But a lot of those people are really sweet. And, you know, we've really grown the real Belizeans. You know, they're a country that was ruled by England, and now they're free. And they, the last 10 years, they have, they've bring in their country. We've got new highways going in, mm. right while we were there this time. Amen. They're doing new roads. Yeah. They, well, we'll say 15 years ago, they were probably all dirt. Now they've got highways. And, I mean, you know, they're, they're working hard. And, and it looks like God's blessing them to me, because things are better. And, you know, we're Reformed Baptists, and so now there's three Reformed Baptist works that we know of, and, you know, within uh, 200 miles. So, that's good, and that's the true gospel. And, I mean, they got some charismatic churches and, you know, some, you know, like cults and, you know, di different places. They got Jehovah's Witnesses, but we're the only ones of the Reformed Baptists. So, that's good. Amen. So... I guess I knew something this time. Right. <laughs> Seventy years later, I got I said something. <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much, and we just want to tell you we had a wonderful time. Amen. I forgot mine. I come a long way since three words. Never let that down. <laughs> When Howie does that, it sounds like a squeaking door. Yeah. <laughs> I love it when he does it. I, I make him do it sometimes. <clears throat> very good, very good testimony, Mrs. Hall. Very good. And now, I guess, if the mother comes first, the daughter should come second. So. I'm going to ask the daughter to come, Miss Loretta Murphy, a.k.a. the princess, to come. The and princess of the palace. The yeah. We got the palace for the princess. The princess, all the princess, all kind of princesses. <laughs> we got our tiny princess now. Tiny princess. Little, little teeny tiny. And tiny and teeny tiny. Yeah. Both of the baby. Both of the baby. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... <clears throat> First, I want to clarify that I'm not making fun of my mom about the, I don't know mine. That is just hilarious to me because my mom always knows hers. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's funny. Because she knows hers and yours. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's a compliment. That's a compliment. Yeah. I'm not touching it. <laughs> So uh, to add to what Mom said, you know, when I first went to Belize, I was skeptical about it. I didn't, wasn't, didn't have the greatest 
time the first time. Uh, <clears throat> it got better and better, and every time it gets better. And the people, you get used to the people. You have to get used to a, a culture before you can uh, embrace it and, and like it, you know. So, of course, there's things that we, <laughs> we raise an eyebrow at, but to what I'm saying, they're really very simple, sweet people uh, for the most part, and very friendly, and they're, you know, they're open to us, which is, is good, you know. They trust us, so that makes you feel pretty good because we're, pretty, we're strangers there, you know. Um, but uh, I guess the best time, best thing about the trip to me was our Bible studies. In the evening we had Bible studies and, um, and Howie led some Bible studies. Amber led one. And our, you know, our young people are phenomenal how smart Amber and Howie are Amen. about the Bible and about what it's really saying and how they can explain it and discuss it is, it's, you know, makes your mouth bowl open, I guess. So, you know, you're, you're kind of like, wow. That's right. And um, <clears throat> so that was that was really cool, and it's it's bonding. It bonds us together, and that's kind of like what happens for us when we go there. It's more of <clears throat> a refreshing and a renewal for us because we're in the middle of nowhere. We're no TVs, no radios, um, and we just are talking and fellowshipping with each other, reading books. Uh, walking out in the nature, in nature, looking at birds, you know, things that we don't do anymore in this country. You know, we don't spend time listening to someone or talking to someone or, uh, or like I said, looking at nature. We just don't really spend a lot of time doing it without noise. We always got to have some kind of noise going, TV, radio, something. We didn't have that there, so uh, it's it was it's just a, a restful, peaceful time when we're there. And um, we did we did go to a church, um, Ken Barber's church, and Ken Barber has a wife and eight children. Um, I think there's there was five of them living there now. I think he has nine kids. Nine. Yeah, I'm sorry. He has nine, but at the place there were one, two, three, four girls and two boys. So six of them were living there, and um, you know they're very quiet little kids, but they're they're sweet and they you know they live they go back and forth from the states to there, and it's a you know that's a they're making a compromise the kids. They're going from having everything to having nothing. And they're happy. And they do what they're supposed to do for the church and with each other and with their parents. They're, they're really good little kids. And, um, well, they're not really little kids anymore. They're getting big. But, you know, the, the mom and the dad, they've made a sacrifice too by, by taking them there and, and doing what they're doing. But they built the they built a new building and, um, for their church because they used to have the church right in their house, and that's kind of rough when you have a little tiny house and you've got eight people living in it. You know you don't have room for things like a church service. You know it's it's kind of rough. But so they were able to build a new building and we were we went into the new building and they have. Uh, it's two story and upstairs is a big open room with with chairs for to do their service and the downstairs was a had a kitchen in it and the people in their church all brought food and we had a big meal afterwards after the service and we got to really talk to the members of the church and with them and and it was it was really it was a really nice time and I can see their ministry growing over the past three or four years that I've known them. I, I can just see 
them getting, um, you know, things going better and better for them. And like Mom was saying, he does a prison ministry, and that is really his calling. He, he's from Texas, uh, Ken Barber is, and he is a tough, tough man. I mean, he's uh, not what you would expect of a, of a missionary. You know, when you, people, all of us have in our mind of a missionary, a real sweet, nice, easy going. You know, this man's rough and tough, and he lived a really rough and tough life. So he can minister to those rough people there that have that are hard drug addicts and whatever. He knows how to deal with them and the people in the prisons. And um, so I pray for him. I pray that you guys would pray for that family. Keep them in your prayers because um, they have a lot, you know, a lot on their plate, and and they are sacrificing themselves and their lives for what they believe in. So. Um, so that was a blessing. And then, of course, I got to play with that little baby. I love babies, so I got to hold that little baby every day. I was in heaven there. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you. Well, very good. You, you, you didn't say Bluebird. No, I didn't say Bluebird. I didn't say Bluebird. So uh, the little girl, say the, the caretaker's daughter, is five years old, and she sings songs. She has little songs that she sings. And she has this one song called Bluebird. And I loved it, and I got her to sing it every day to me. <laughs> this Bluebird. So, and I actually taped it on my on my phone so I can watch her and listen to her every day. <laughs> she's so cute. <laughs> she, she is a precious little girl. She's just, uh, uh, I'll tell about it my, my portion. Well, I, I've already made a bend. I've already made a monumental blunder. <laughs> just <laughs> like what, what you expect <laughs> this morning. They'll say, what else is new? Yeah, what else is new? I walk over to Amber at the piano, and I'm trying to assure that I'm really impressed with her, because I think she's just the best there is. So I said to her, Amber, are you going to give a testimony this morning since you and Holly was already back last week? She says, yes, Pastor. How are you going to do it? What order are you going in? So I'm basking in my glory, ready to show off. And I said, well, I, I would like you to do yours last because, you know, I, I always say the best for last. Really trying to let her know how impressed I am with her. And she says, oh, so you think you're the best. You always do last. <laughs> that that wiped me out. That was it. <laughs> so I had to think very quickly on my feet, as Donald Trump would do, and so I I I, I said I said, oh no no no, I I, I misspoke. I, it was a uh, I made a erroneous statement. I said, what I meant to say was, she's looking at me now. <laughs> what, what I meant to say was, I always say the best for next to last. <laughs> <laughs> so, Miss Next to Last is going to come right now and give her a testimony about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> The Lord definitely doesn't try to keep me humble. Everybody, you know, I don't have to say I'm the best because everybody else says it for me. <laughs> right, um, everybody that knows me knows that I like being outside, I like kids, and I like to talk. And I got to do a lot of those three <laughs> things while I was in Belize. Um, first of all, we had our, our flights were weird. So 
We knew that me and Howie were going to be coming back by ourselves, but we didn't realize that Howie and I had a separate flight on our way to Belize also. So we had a big thing. We almost thought that we, you know, our flight left us, blah, blah, blah. Turns out my mom and pastor had to go one way, me and Howie strolled along the other way. And um, so we started off good being by ourselves, and we ended off good um, on our way home also. So praise the Lord for that. Um, first of all, I'm always excited when I'm, when I'm going to Belize. Um, it's going to sound weird, but I love just breathing their air. It's so much better and cleaner, and everything's green, so that just helps me even more. So it's always beautiful there. Um, as they already mentioned, we did go to Bob Farley's church in Punta Gorda. And um, it was a long ride, but it was still a nice ride. We're all just stuck in this car together. And um, in a way, that's how I like it, when you can just sit and talk, or, or not even talk. We know sometimes we just sat there and just enjoyed the ride. Um, Bob has a daughter. So they told you what you know how they felt about the, about the trip. And I'm just going to tell you what I took from it because um, I was uh, talking to Bob's daughter, Hannah, and I spent time with, um, with the other teenagers there. We were talking and we were playing and having a good time. Uh, so it's always nice to visit with them. Um, we did have devotion, as my mom mentioned, which um, I'm a big believer in like Bible study, and I wish I could attend Wednesday night Bible study. Um, just because the fellowship uh, brings me closer to God, and I know that um, my walk with God is my own, and I'm the only one that can, you know, make sure that I'm that I'm doing that walk. So whenever we have devotion, and whenever I get the chance to speak, especially, um, it, it's just a blessing to me personally. So, um, as Mama mentioned. I guess, um, you know, Bob's going to start bringing people down to our place. Well, um, I think that's a really good idea because just going down to Belize, you're, you're really taken away from everything. Everything that was bothering you from that tier, you know, anything that was, that was wrong, you forget about it. As soon as you're on the plane, if you haven't already forgot about it, as soon as you get to Belize, you're, you're, it's kind of just a, a carefree Zone is how I is how I put it. I just put all the cares on my mom. That's how I. <laughs> but um, so when they said that they were going to bring people to our place instead of you know being there with their families in Punta Gorda when they take them away a hundred miles you know a hundred miles north two hours drive, um, they're really going to be by themselves and they're going to be able to um, also you know get their walk with the Lord closer, and as they're trying to become ministers and, and whatnot. Um, no one mentioned the zip line yet, so the zip line's up for, you know, most of it, and um, Julio, the guy that was, that's that been building it, he's been doing a really good job. He had another guy helping him, um, and it looks fantastic. It's got, it's a great setup, and I suggest everybody, you know, try to just keep in mind, keep looking for pictures online. Um, about our castle, we've got some some cool doors on the front of it, and it's looking great on the inside. And I'm sure that it's going to be a, a good attraction as well when uh, when it gets all finished. Um, and lastly, I'd like to talk about uh, Aurora and Jalila, the baby. Um, just because kids are a, a big part of my life, and, and I want to you know continue working on with, working with kids throughout my life. And um, I got to just a, just a little taste of teaching when I was down there um, because Aurora need, needed help with school. She wasn't doing too good, so I thought I would just sit down with her and you know talk, you know, do her ABCs, her numbers and shapes and whatever. Um, and apparently, it really helped because just her first day back to school, and her teacher already said that she was doing a lot better because mm -hmm. we went and visit her at school. So um, that was just a blessing because I think. That just means that I'm on the right path. That what what God is is telling me to do is is to teach. Um, but that's about it. We had a great trip, and yeah, thank you. I wanted to say one thing. I had on my note, but I forgot to look. I forgot mine. I guess. Oh. <laughs> I, I wanted to tell people probably don't understand about the zip line and stuff. And I was going to tell you.
not meant to tell you when it's up there. Um, the reason why we're putting the zip line is because Belize has become, oh, it's snowing. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I didn't know it. Belize is snowing. Wow. No. Oh, it's snowing here. <laughs> uh, Belize has become like a hot spot for people on vacation. So when we built this uh, missionary place, we said we were going to do something that's going to attract people to come there. And of course, we we're going to have a missionary working there. And of course, it'll be a Christian lodge. It's not going to be no alcohol, and it's just going to be good family lodge, and people can hear about the Lord if they want. And um, the, but the point of it is, is to make money to do our ministry there because everything takes money, Amen. and you can't do anything with the people to help them, or, or and we want to build a church, so we need money. So this is going to be our money maker to use for the ministry. Well, we hope one that because people will come and enjoy themselves and you make money and then you can do something what the Lord wants to do. So that's why that is. Mom, how does the question? Where is the police? Where is it? It's um, south of Mexico. It's directly to the right of Guatemala. Okay. It's right I knew it was down there, but yeah, I Yeah, Central America. Thank you. You're welcome. I've heard a lot of that. <laughs> Yeah, every time we go on the plane, there's a multitude of new people going, and uh, it's really growing. And I think the thing we noticed this time, we all said something about it. Um, even in Belize City, which is used to be kind of run down, it seemed like everything looked a little cleaner, uh, more new buildings, new businesses going up. And, and then as we went on down, uh, the same thing is true, it just looked cleaner. Everything looked better. And so it's just a growing place. And, um, the only thing that was worse was the road. The road, you're yeah, right. They were the, fixing it. <laughs> that's the disaster. They were fixing it. Yeah. But we went to, uh, we went to go to, we used to go to Haiti. I, I did. And uh, the road was so bad that they just had big craters, it was much worse than I was in Belize. Mm -hmm. And you go by and literally you, you would see a, 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 a jeep down in the crater <laughs> and, and they just leave it there and, and go ahead and, and fill holes in all the other places and keep going. It's just a, then later that week they'd come back and pull the jeep out. It just was horrible. And our roads have gotten pretty bad, but at least we noticed this time too even after y'all left, uh, Amber, you and Howie, uh, we went down the road and we we had to stop and wait because they had crews out working our road. It was really refreshing. And they would take off a section pretty long, maybe a half a mile or something, and, and they, they completely we get the segment off of it, had it graded down to the dirt, and they had bulldozers running over the dirt. And then they were going to come along later, I suppose, and put the asphalt back on. So they had in little increments of, of, of along the way, but they're they're really actually working on roads, which we were so thankful for, because it's the worst thing about the whole place. And if I was the president of the country, I think the first thing I would do is to fix the infrastructure and the roads, because if you're making a living on tourism, why would you want to? alienate the tourists to make them angry because of the horrible roads they have to ride right on and besides the people so so thank goodness for the the, the road work that's being done and uh you know as i think back we, we did go down to bob farley's and uh he he's a really good man and like Adriana said he's been there for about 20 years and, and um, he asked us to come and preach. And he asked me to preach on the subject of uh, finding your spiritual gift or finding what God wants you to do in the ministry within our church framework uh, and find out what you call it is. And I think the same thing can be said this morning that we should each one find out what our calling is from God. 
and what gifts and talents he's given us and where we can utilize those gifts and talents. And as we, as we got to uh, our Bible study, during the night, each night, uh, how and Ember, even before we went down there and heard this, had said that they really wanted to start a new ministry. And we began to talk about that and begin to discuss it as we sit there. And that's kind of what our place is all about. Uh, we've always said that we modeled after, at least I always said, we modeled after uh, Francis Schaeffer who had a place in Switzerland called La Prie. And he was a reformed guy, a philosopher, a brilliant man. And he would have people from all over the world come and visit the Brie in the 60s and 70s and 80s. And it was a retreat center in the mountains uh, close to Geneva, Switzerland. And uh, ours is just the opposite of that. It's in the heated jungles of Belize. But the purpose is kind of the same. There were a multitude of young people that would go to the Brie and hear about the gospel. And they were young people that really probably would never go to a local church, but they would come there and they made it kind of into a local church. But as they came there, they learned about the Lord. And um, so we're just praying that God's going to use our place for that. Uh, the night before we left, we saw another indication that God is bringing that to pass. Uh, a car came in the driveway. Y'all know about this. And, and uh, somebody on the front porch said, there's a car coming. And so we looked out the door. The car went by the house, down to the jungle. And evidently they were trying to find us and we were right in front of them. So I'm not saying they were very smart. I'm just saying they were there. And uh, then all 10 minutes later, the car came back up and went past the house again and went all up out of sight. And we said, man, this, pe this person's really either really dumb or really blind. Keep finding the place. So then, don't ask me why, he got out of the car up at the castle and we saw him walking back down to the house. Now, why he couldn't pull into the driveway, we don't know. But he came to the house, and he said, I'm looking for a room, and I'm going to spend three days. So, we talked to him, and uh, caught us off guard, and we, we didn't have anything prepared. Because he didn't want to stay with us in the lodge, he didn't want to stay in an expensive place up at the uh, Heliconia house. But he wanted a place for about $15 a night. And so Henrietta went into uh, some kind of mode. Uh, I guess it was emergency reaction mode. And she began to bark out orders. And uh, it caught us all off guard because she's never done that before. Oh, right. <laughs> but if she was barking out the orders, my, 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 commandment, well, my command was, you go inside, sit on the couch, take the guy, talk to him for at least 30 minutes till we get to room ready. I said, yes ma'am. So I took the guy in the living room, started talking to him. His name was Gary, and he was an uh, older man, maybe 60 years old, had gray hair, nice looking guy, and he was from Canada. And he was, while I was talking to him, she grabbed Lenny and Jeff and whoever else was there, and they jumped in the car and went down to the Bear Grylls house, which is a, a little thing. It used to be a, a place where we put our tubes and stuff, and we made it into a real small, little uh, place to stay at night for one or two people. and. Uh, 
It's a screen door on the front, bunk beds. It's got a bathroom beside it with a shower and a, and a commode. And so they had to go down there, clean it out, grab some, uh, grab some uh, mattresses, grab some sheets and a pillow, grab a lantern, and go down there and fix the place up uh, while I was entertaining Brother Gary. And so they went on down there and they were scrubbing out the bathroom and, and, and making sure there weren't any scorpions in the, in the, in the house. And uh, Letty, now, now we've been there, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years. And all that time, my, the longing of my heart has been to see a Howley, Howley Munker, a, a Howler Monkey on our property. We heard one, never seen one. So stupid Letty goes running down the trail and runs right into a howler monkey. And I didn't get to see it yet. And there she is with a monkey with a baby on his back. And there's Letty with the broom saying, get away, get away, get away. So what does she do, the idiot? She scares the howler monkey away. And, and now he's gone, wait eight years to get one, and she takes a broom and runs it away. So it was a pretty exciting night. And back at the house, Karen and I are still talking. Blah, 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 blah. So we finally got it finished, and he went down, and we haven't heard from him since. I'm not even gonna, about to tell you what happened, because we have no idea. He didn't come for breakfast, so we don't know what happened. We're gonna have to find out later. But he came. And I thought it was really neat because he, he has a lodge in Canada. Don't tell Gary. Next Sunday he'll be up there. He'll be leaving us again. But he's got a lodge up there. And he said, well, I want this is a piece of cake. And then list, he said, I live in a town of 25 people. And you leave there and you get to my lodge to go hunting or fishing you have to go 20 miles. So he was really out in, 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 the, in the woods. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm sure he had, didn't have any problem with our place. But we talked about that, and he's in Belize looking for a piece of property. And anyway, he was there, he found a place, God brought him to us, and just the little indication that God can bring people to you there. And, and hopefully we can be able to have a continuous flow of people eventually so we can tell them about, about the Lord. Uh, when we had the Bible studies at night, uh, we had them, when Loretta and Henrietta was there, we also had them when uh, Amber and Hyde were there. And most, if not all, of the time, a lady would come and sing the Bible study. Uh, Jeff, we got to talk to some, not so much in the Bible study. But we don't believe that Lady and Jeff are saved because they haven't made any indication of that as of yet. Now, Jeff, I, I really believe myself that, that God's working on Jeff because he has changed a lot. His nature has changed. He used to be all about macho, killing people, machetes, beating people up, uh, had these really crazy wild girlfriends, uh, and always run around demonstrating how he whacked somebody up. And, and, and he, he just, he was just wild. And he has mellowed down so much that he no longer has an interest in those girls he's got Lady, He seems like he really, really loves her, which we never saw before. And, and uh, we think that when Lola moved in, the little girl that we're talking about, that she kind of melted Jeff's heart. By the way, she also melted the highway's heart this time. <laughs> I said, man, I have to do, 
I just got to do everything that girl says. I can't help it. I can't help myself. <laughs> and so uh, when we got there last year and we saw Jeff sitting at the table and Lola was feeding him with a fork, <laughs> we just freaked out because he's never been docile and, and kind and, and childlike like that. And he wants to go to church. Uh, we don't know where he is along the road to salvation, but we really thank God for working in his life. Uh, we're hoping that God is working in Letty's life. We, we think he is. He is. But uh, she, she's a little scatterbrain, and, and, and you'll tell her stuff about the Lord, and she won't, doesn't seem to get it at all. So our theology is probably appropriate to her because if she had to get saved on her own, she's probably too dumb. But uh, it's a joke I'm saying this. But she doesn't have that mental ability to really be interested. But, but when God gets ready to save her, he will give her the knowledge and the wisdom that he will save her. And, and seriously, though, on a serious note, she's learned so much from, from Henrietta, from uh, Amber, from, from Loretta, that she's really come along and really much improved. Improved virgin. And she's about a hundred times better for Jeff than all those girls he used to date. She's been good for him. And she's a faithful life wife. She, uh, she loves him. So pray for Letty and Jeff and their salvation. You've got to continue to, to work with them. Um, we, 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 we're very proud of, proud of them. Uh, so when we did the Bible studies, she did listen. And one night she asked some good questions. Uh, and, and we tried to answer those questions. So we pray that God will have mercy upon them and, and will we'll save them. Um, can't see my notes. Oh yeah, we had a we had a negative experience. We had we came in one we were sitting there one day and these people got out of the car and started running up to the house and Henry went to the door and said, Who are you? And what do you want? And uh, they said, We want to talk to Leticia, which is Lady's name. And we wanted to know what they wanted to talk about. And they had all these pamphlets, papers. And finally, she just told them that uh, she wasn't there, she couldn't talk, and they needed, needed to leave. We found out later that they were Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, and, and just to let you know how to pray, I was joking about Lady, but she is gullible, like most people are that aren't Christians. And those people have been coming to our place, on our property, a Christian place, and they're bringing their cultish, satanic falsehood on our property and teaching Letty the devil's message. And we said some to her and she said, well, he, he, to show you how God was, she said, well, he pointed it out to me right in the Bible. And, and she just doesn't know, she, she don't know. So we've got to pray that God will open her eyes, give her wisdom and just save her. But we told Jeff to just tell those people the next time they come that this is a Baptist place, it's a Christian place, and they're not welcome there and they can't come there. So pray that God will protect them. If they're there and they're lost and there's seven day Adventists and Jehovah Witnesses and all manner of other people come in there to tell them falsehoods, that's a very scary thing. And besides that, it's spiritual warfare. Because it's like it's like ISIS coming to our country and killing people. If you have a a lodge which is 
Christian, and you have people coming there who are going to spread satanic lies, then we have to fight that. We have a duty to fight that, stand against it, to get them away from there, and so that they will leave us alone to pray with us about that. Um, we we have a little guy named Maddox. Uh, he calls Henrietta Mamans. Everybody else calls her Mama, but he's always called her Mamans, plural, for, for whatever reason. And we worry about the kids because the uh, lady has kids from a previous marriage. Uh, Jeff has a son from a previous marriage. And in that country, it's pretty chaotic where the family is concerned. Families are spread all over everywhere. And um, there's a girl across the street at the fruit factory who has a whole bunch of children. And we don't think any of them are the same father. Just sleep with somebody and have a child. Next week, sleep with somebody else and have a child. It's just a, 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 a country that is morally bankrupt and the morality is very bad. And so, consequently, when you get married or you don't get married, but you have children, the children are scattered all over the place with different parents or different people and there's no family cohesiveness, and that's a disaster for the children. Well, Lady's found herself in the same situation. She's got uh, children uh, down in Dirtland Briga. She's got children uh, north of where we are. She's got children there with Jeff and Lady. So what she and Jeff are trying to do and this is another indication that Jeff is growing and the Lord is working with him. Uh, he's trying to get her children back together with him and Lady so they can all be in one place. So they're working on that and they're attempting to do that. Um, and please pray about that. There was a time when he told women that they had to send their children somewhere else. He didn't want anything to do with children. So God's working with him. He's really, really working with him. And Alex is a, a little guy with a, the greatest smile in the world and a personality that just bubbles over. And I, I really like him. Uh, I guess apart from the little monkey, Howler Monkey Lola, uh, that's, that's what Jeff named the Howler Monkey, or Aunt Monkey, and she loves it. Uh, Alex was probably my favorite. And so me and Henrietta went to the school and we checked on them because somebody told us that they found the kids, saw the kids and they had lice in their hair. They had been bathed in a week and they were being mistreated by the people that were keeping them now, who are Lenny's ex-husband's sisters. And so it, it upset us and it disturbed us. And she can't get custody of them yet, they're working on it now. But we went to see about Alex. Um, we went to school and you know, Henry Adams, she brought him out, checked his head, checked his hair, we looked at his head when we were talking to him. And he looked all right. But she asked him, uh, where do you want to live? And he said, I, I want to live with my mama and Jeff. And she said, do you want to live with the place you are now? And she said, he said, no. He said, the people are, they're not nice, I just don't like it. And he tried to run away a while back and run to, to our place. 
and the police uh, caught him by the neck and pulled him back and, and wouldn't let him come. So that kind of broke her heart, you know, that touched her heart. And I'm, I'm talking about not just a minister in police now or not police in general, but specific things that God has pulled us into that we're at the point now that we are actually involving our staff in the lives of the people who are there in a real way. And sometimes that's good. And sometimes it sometimes it hurts because yeah. when somebody you love yeah. when somebody you love is is uh, is being uh, uh, abused, uh, it's a hurtful thing, you know. So we just so, praise God that uh, we can be a part of that and pray for pray for addicts and pray for those kids. And so I'm going to close now. And uh, so please, please be in prayer about these things we talked about and be in prayer about uh, addicts and the kids especially. And uh, I want to ask Brother Randy if he believes us in our closing prayer.